Let's make planning this year's garden a lot easier with the Planter app. This app is packed full of features. It has companion and combative planting, which are indicated by green and red circles. It has a simple drag and drop interface. It has 80 plus plants and thousands of varieties. All the info is needed to grow veggies, including when to start seeds, transplant and harvest, the ability to create custom plants and varieties, a growing guide with in-depth articles to supplement the quick info in the app, not to mention that you can view it and use it both on your PC and on your mobile device, so you can always be planting your garden on the go. This app is used in my garden year-round to plan the upcoming seasons, reference the last year's seasons so I know when to rotate, and it also helps me to learn more about companion planting using the visual cues. When you create your garden, it's going to be based on the dimensions and each block is going to be a square foot. I've had a lot of fun using this app and the Planter app, which is spelled P-L-A-N-T-E-R, is available in your app store on both Google and Apple. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and plan your garden and use the link below to get a discount on the Planter app. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Has there ever come a time, Batavia, where you were just planting your spring garden, you're like, I should have done it different, or you realize that you just made some like big blunder? Mm-hmm, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, I like I like it. <laughs> this is going to be a great show, everybody. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the mistakes that we've made in our gardens in spring and probably what you should avoid and maybe how they can work out in the long run, too. Sometimes mistakes aren't necessarily mistakes. You can do the whole Bob Ross, you know, happy little tree. So, um, yeah, I have made many mistakes, and just to start right out the gate, I did one this year, and I forgot to plant my peas. So um, I've got my full garden planted at this point, and I missed every single trellis, though. How does that happen? <laughs> Do you have anything growing on the trellis? Yeah, I have peas. Trellises? The <laughs> trellises. I have um, peas that I had planted in the winter or in the fall to see if I could get them to grow through the winter mm -hmm. and overwinter them essentially. And, um, I was, man, I just, I was holding out hope, you know? And so this brings to the whole thing about timing and stuff like that, which I think goes mm -hmm. without saying, but to be conscious about it, like I was holding out hope they would start to grow and they just didn't grow. And I just, I don't know. I just totally missed it. But the question would be like, would you go back? And even though you know that like, hey, it's a little late, they're heat sensitive. Would you still try and put in peas in yours? In my garden? Yes. In your garden? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> There's always an asterisk. I love it. Uh, yeah. Well, let's, so let's speak about what I know in my head that's you know, driving my decisions. So when was your planting date or time frame? So usually it's between January 1st and the middle of February. And I typically around the middle of January, if we get, a, when we get a warm spell, I'll go and plant them. Mm -hmm. And peas, of course, based on what we're talking about in the time frame, are cool weather crops, right? And we're now in March. Yeah. And so for your area, you're probably what a month off of pretty warm weather pretty consistently dude it was 85 degrees yesterday <laughs> is so uh, because that's not my experience like there's no planting a thing like that in january but if you look at it and say if they're saying plant in early january those things are kind of percolating you know and what is that january february march like you could be at the end of March getting a harvest if you kind of rough that out, oh, right? Yeah. General time frame. Yeah, usually and I start around March, middle of March, I'll start harvesting and then I'll be harvesting heavy until about the middle, about a month, I'll be harvesting real heavy off of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I used to think like, you know, the sliding scale when it comes to, oh, it's just two weeks later, three weeks later, like, but only focusing on the start date and not necessarily thinking about how that plant's going to mature as the days and the dates move ahead. So if you were to plant now, you'd have 
peas attempting to grow and mature in the beginning of the heat. Yeah. And that's the reason why I say in your space, not so much. Now, if I look up peas for my space and I did the correction, it's somewhere between late April and maybe the second week of May is what my extension service is estimating is my planting time. Really? Yeah, which seems late to me, yeah. but I mean, it's the extension service. This is this is what they do, right? Um, is it and a- so with that in mind, because I feel like I for sure have planted a little bit earlier than that. Yeah. But either way, um, what they're telling me is that I could still be growing peas in basically June. Yeah. You know, which has been my experience. So I have a little bit more play, I think, a little bit more play where I could grow them, plant them a little bit later if I missed that initial window. Yeah. So I, not a whole lot, but a little bit more because my kind of spring to summer is slower. The progression is slower than yours. So I love what you started to say. And when you said it, I finished it in my head, but you didn't say the words I wanted to say when you were like, it's the, the start date, but I don't ever think. And the first thing that popped in my head was the finish date, mm-hmm, like the mm-hmm. harvest date, because that's so hard to nail. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many different things that you can get into it. Because, I mean, for me, I could care a lot. Like, I'll plant my peas today if I knew I was going to get them harvested in, you know, two weeks. Like, that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's that finish date, that finish line that's the hard one. Yeah, that's um, and, and that comes with time. So, you know. So I finished it in my head too. Like that's what I was, you know, obviously that's what I was speaking to, right? Yeah. <laughs> y'all finished it in y'all, y'all head too, right? Yeah, yeah. you know what I okay. did. Yeah, <laughs> to everyone that's listening. Uh, but the part that's interesting to me is that there's so much information out there regarding, you know, put in certain criteria and then it gives a recommendation on when to plant a thing. So much information. And then it's like you're out on your own after that. Yeah. You know, so again, you start to try to map out, all right, my seed packet says maybe uh, the window is similar. Seed packets do that too. Like they rarely talk about when to harvest. They give you time to, you know, maturity. A lot of them do. A lot of them. Maybe not all of them. Um, and it's kind of one of those things like it's on kind of the best scenario. So then when I'm trying to cheat the system, meaning I'm trying to plant later than suggested, I do this all the time in the summer when I'm trying to plant later than what's suggested or recommended then I get into that whole dance of like well do I just count the total number of days and then that's when I'm going to be harvesting nope again conditions are different at that point that finished time frame is going to be different based on the conditions you're planting them in well let's look look we're five minutes in and we're getting derailed but I think this is an important thing to talk about Mm-hmm. determining that finish time is is tough man because i mean i'm glad the camera wasn't on because when you said the seed packets has the days on it like i i rolled my eyes so deep i almost lost my pupils mm-hmm. i mean that's all. Mm-hmm. they were gone because <laughs> it's a gross number and when i say gross i mean like yucky number because it gives you this like sense of like okay 170 days i'm gonna have my cabbage mm-hmm. but that's not really the case and there's there's so many different factors that go into it like sunlight watering fertilizing you know temperature all that stuff really goes Mm -hmm. into all the stuff that makes it grow so it's hard to really get that get that finish date in your mind you can get an estimation but Mm -hmm. i mean especially if you're looking into intensive planting or gardening which we know that most of our audience is doing and you know trying to get that spring crop in and then turn around and put that summer crop in behind it i mean look am i gonna delay my tomatoes for some peas like i mean let's be real you know what i mean Mm -mm. yeah that's actually one of the biggest challenges that i faced is the estimating the finish date because that's going to impact the next thing I'm planting. Right. You know, so to your point, if I'm late, should I just forfeit whatever that planting is? Because I don't want to kind of get myself in a jam and then it's the domino effect. Now you're late planting summer because you're waiting for something to finish out. You know, Um, I think with some vegetables, you take the chance with others, you know, you don't, um, and it also depends on how important peas are if we go back to peas. Yeah, I mean, oh man, I, I gotta, I'm gonna say this. I almost don't even want to talk about mistakes. I just want to talk about determining the finish date now. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so important. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it, it, it just, there's so many variables 
that can come into it, it's it's tough. Well, you know what's interesting about the finish date for spring? Like we're kind of so summer is a longer period of growing than spring for most of us, right? Right. And there's some things that we're trying to beat the clock on for summer. But most times you get something in and, you know, plants it for summer and you get whatever you're trying to produce. Right. You know, um, you may run into a number of challenges, but you get to the finish line within that summer period. Now, there again, there's some things that depending on when you plant them, you may be afraid they're going to get hit with the cold on the other end of summer. Um, But. It's all, it's been difficult for me. I think it, when we were talking yesterday, you're like, you know, have you made any mistakes? And I'm like, everything I do in spring feels like a mistake. You know, yeah. like, you know, it, it's the the fight against how long it's going to be cool for these cool weather crops, right? And then those hot days, what impact are they going to have on them? You know, it's a bolt city in a lot of our gardens. Once you get towards middle spring, not even end of spring, Damn, you've been hanging out um, with me way too much. I love it. Yeah. Bolt city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a true statement because spring is very, it can be, it depends on where you live. Like in my area, I'm in zone eight, a Batavia is in zone six, a um, six for apple. Uh, so, it's totally different but for me like my spring i mean i was just saying in a video the other day on sandy bottom home said that um we can we can go directly from winter into summer mm-hmm, and i swear mm-hmm. that's what it's looking like it's gonna do i've mm-hmm. you know at this point i think well actually happy spring everybody let's say that so today is the first day of spring we're clearly recording this before that but we're well, actually, it's spring is going to be has just passed. Okay, this releases on a Thursday, so happy four days later after the first day of spring. <laughs> yeah, you get it, you get it. So, um, but for me, like that's the first day of spring. But w- right now, as we're recording this, I'm tw- we're twenty days before spring. It's already been eighty five degrees. Mm-hmm. It clearly looks like it's just going to go straight to summer. And then it's going to, we're still going to get cool nights though. I mean, it's supposed to be like 42 degrees, 40 degrees. So you can't put stuff out, but those warm temperatures make things bolt city occur. So Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. really hard to kind of figure out that finish date that we want because if the, if you could get a finish date, I mean, it would be a totally new game in a garden. If they were like, this seed is guaranteed to produce in 50 days and then you could mark Mm -hmm. on your calendar and you could just you know it would be totally different so yeah if i knew we were going to go um and create another subject when we started recording this i would have had my little (laughs) (laughs) little chart here i've not looked at all the resources clearly but there is one resource um and it's on the amazon list it's clyde's uh little calendar where it's like the sliding yeah the sliding material yeah and so that's one resource where I've seen like they give you a plant date and then you look to the right and you see the estimated harvest date. Right. Right. They're putting you on the schedule to say. And and the cool thing about that is generally if you move that thing a little bit further to the right, your harvest date will shift. But all of the things we just spoke of are in play right. You know, so going back to the seed package, it's they told you planted July. Right. Most times they give you a window, but let's say you plant it in July, you know, whatever that vegetable is, I mean, we've moved from spring, it's going to be ready in 75 days. I'm not even getting into the dance of, is that from direct sowing or a transplant? Nope. You're not going to get me there. <laughs> but that's, that is the hard part. Let me say the hard part when you are planting based on season as we should. And then when you are planning for multiple seasons to grow in that same space, meaning, you know, you plant for spring and then you're going to use that same space for summer, getting the start and the finish dates. That's that's the difficulty. Yeah, that is it is difficult because. I'm just thinking, Okay, so, for instance, I'm trying something new this year. Remember when I brought up recently the fertilizer injector? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm trying that this year um, and I'm trying it for two reasons. One, because I want to make it easier myself. But two, I want to see 
if I inject the fertilizer directly to the plant roots, if I can in fact meet those dates that are on those plants. Now, I mean, I'm not out here with a calendar like, okay, this was the day. But, you know, I have a general idea. And, I mean, for me, 70 to 80 days, whatever. You know, there's definitely going to be some kind of window in there. But I'm trying to see if, like, if the fertilizing schedule will help push that date closer to it. Now, I'm not over fertilizing. Don't get me wrong. What I anticipate will occur is I'll be on a better schedule. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and then more effective delivery to the plant. So, we'll see how that goes. But when it comes down to it, like for me, I'm like your garden, your backyard is pretty shady, right? In the winter and spring. slim shady. Yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just officially felt like clearly Evan and, you know, whatever our generation of old timers are. Yeah. Okay. I guess we'd be boomers. I don't know. No, no, we're not boomers. Not quite. No. We missed it. But, um, you know, so I've said it on like a video before and it's like this time of year, like when I grow my greenhouse in the winter time, everything is just kind of growing and it's slow. But once we get a little bit of warmth occur, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden we get more sunlight, everything starts to really grow faster. And that's really always yeah. like, once I start learning that it really has helped me to understand like when things are going to go into the ground and what to expect from it. Because this finish date is it's, it's elusive is what it is mm-hmm. to me. It's mm-hmm, just, mm-hmm. it's completely well, elusive. Let's also put some parameters around when it matters. Right. So it's the type of vegetable when it comes to a finished date. Anything that you can harvest as a baby, (laughs) your favorite baby greens, like it doesn't quite matter. Well, let me say this. You can decide whether or not it matters. For a lot of years, I've wanted to grow lettuce as an example to size. Right. Right. And for sure, lettuce is bolting in my garden every year whenever I plant it at some point. Then I start to look back, but then I move on really quickly, but I start to look back and say, did I really get the most out of that lettuce? Like when it came from starting it, direct sowing it or transplanting it? Like, um, And I've been eating from the store a lot of baby greens lately. And so now I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't matter of the finish date for this lettuce, you know? Maybe I just rock with it, which whatever size that, you know, is out there when I'm ready to eat lettuce, but something like a head of cabbage, a finish date matters. It matters. You know? yeah. Well, broccoli, a finish date matters. It does. And it doesn't. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you for a second. So as long as that cabbage is heading, you're going to get a smaller cabbage and you're going to get a bigger cabbage. So at least you're going to get some kind of head of cabbage. Well, so right? so broccoli, broccoli and cabbage in my mind are the same. So there is a point with when the head starts to form and the leaves start to close in. Right. You know, like when it comes to what size that's getting, you're not going to get. How should I say it? So a size, a, a cabbage the size of a football no, a softball is going to be the size it's going to be if it's already started to cl- those leaves have started to close in. Like there's no more growth that's happening there, you know. Um, the, and correct me if I'm wrong. When you look at the, oh, I liked it though. I, there was some closed caption. I always watch television with closed caption, and so I was reading the words that Ben was saying as we were talking. And I don't know how it happened, but he's turned it off. I so turned now, it on yeah. for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can. Can you see my words? Yeah, I see your words. Okay, but then I can't see my own words. Well, you don't want to see your own words. No. (laughs) Uh, Anywho, so long and short of it, I I think that cabbage, based on the growing patterns, it matters, right? I think that broccoli, it matters. I think that things like cauliflower, it matters, especially for those kind of those heads. I mean, you're talking about taste as well, you know. and I, boy, did I struggle last year, last spring, when it came to when the hell is this broccoli going to be ready? Yeah. And then you get such a short window, right? So you could talk about that as well, like estimating the finish date, because it's going to impact when you're harvesting, when you're maybe replanting in that space. But then, shoot, don't look up and, and estimate it wrong and miss the window. Come on, somebody. <laughs> when it comes to broccoli, like, 
You do. You do have to. I mean, you got to be on time. It's just like okra. Like if you miss the okra, you're screwed. You know, and broccoli is the same way. Like if you miss it, it'll separate and then you'll it'll bolt and all that. So the finish date, man, this finish date word is really bothering me now. Now you're going to give me like a panic attack about my garden. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Because I just planted my potatoes today. That's right. It's tater time. Mm-hmm. And um, I put them out and I was I, I recorded a video about it and I was saying that the plan is to plant those potatoes now so they're going to grow and then I should harvest them about June, right? They say 100 days for potatoes. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. if I harvest them in June and then I can turn around and I know I shouldn't, I have to double check my planter app. I think I changed it. I, my plan, and I may have told a lie, I was going to put tomatoes behind it, but I think I actually changed that plan. So I got to recheck that. But it, let's just go with tomatoes for now. I was going to put that in as a, for a later harvest date. So as I looked at it, I was thinking, well, what if it goes until July? What if it takes longer? You know what I mean? And I've fully planted out my garden and I'm looking at this weather that we're having. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, crap, you know, I've got I just put some heads of cabbage in a couple weeks ago and they're starting to get comfortable now and growing. So then the question becomes is like, how fast are they going to head up? You know, how yeah. fast am I going to get a harvest off of them? Because that bed in particular is the sweet potato bed this year. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. I mean, you got to have some time for that. Now, for me in my area, it works out pretty good because I have I think we have like 270 days of a growing season. Mm-hmm. So I have plenty of time to grow the, the sweet potatoes. But I want to have that sweet potato bed emptied in time to have a fall harvest as well. So I'm looking ahead at that, too. So I'm not only planning my spring to summer, but now my spring to summer to fall into winter. So these dates really start to matter, and it can be overwhelming to look at it. Yeah, it can. And, and just to clarify, your growing days, you're counting from average last frost to average first frost, right? I don't know. All I know is this says growing days in my area, 250 or 70 or something like that. So it was the bottom line is if it takes 100 days to get a potato or a sweet potato, there's plenty of time to get those in and you can play with those dates a little bit. Yeah, well, sweet potatoes are interesting because it's 100 days of you and I both know it really wants to be hot, hot weather. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I've noted my growing days before and I've used average last frost to average first frost and so I'm at 199 days using that formula Um, and I think it's when you look at kind of again your garden versus mine which I know that there are a bunch of people that garden in areas like mine and then a bunch of people that garden in areas like yours um, it's there's also the responsibility of the gardener Right. Yeah. You know, so you're like, basically what I heard you say is I'm going to pull those cabbage out if they've not hit it. And it's time for me to get my sweet potatoes in. But you designed it that way. You designed put sweet potatoes to follow cabbage. You didn't have to. You could have put a whole bunch of lettuce there. You know, you're doing cut. You are you just harvesting the whole head. It wouldn't matter. Right. Oh, well, look at you. I did that. So mm-hmm. I actually did that in particular. So the way I did it is the way the sun hits my bed. I put the cabbage in the front, the lettuce in the back. The lettuce comes out first, so I know that when the lettuce comes out, then I will have space to at least start some of my sweet potatoes Mm -hmm. and stagger them if I have to. So I did do that, but at the same time, like, the the way that everything's been, it's just been, like, real hit or miss, so it's kind of, like, up in the air, you know what I mean? Now, that being said, I just started my sweet potato slips, like, two weeks ago, so we've got plenty of time before (laughs) we can even think about doing that. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me, I saw your video. I need to start my sweet potato slips. I feel like I've started them as late as March the 15th. Mm-hmm. To be quite frank, I'm keeping it really real, son. I'm hoping that I stumble across sweet potato slips in the stores as well. Like last year was the better year for sweet potato harvest. And almost all of my sweet potatoes are planted based on purchase slips. Um, and I, th- I didn't do the math, but I kind of feel good about the price, purchase price. Again, kind of using last year as a reference, don't know where it'd be this year. Um, and kind of, you know, to harvest ratio. Um, I am going to start them and we'll see. Maybe this will be the year. But all of the potato stuff has just been 
Like it's it's escaping me, you know. It's elusive. Yeah. <laughs> um, one year I've had great luck with slips. Again, timing. You know, when it comes to like I first week of June, I need to get something in the ground for sweet potatoes. You know, so whatever I have ready, you know, and how developed those roots are are going to determine when they hit the ground what they're going to produce. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I want to try to get ahead of the game in my 199 days, which is still cut because I'm not planting sweet potato slips after my first, you know, my, my last frost has passed. Last frost is like April 17th. I'm not planting sweet potatoes again until the first week of, of June. That's two months later. You know, it's funny. I was thinking this year, so I planted my sweet potatoes like two weeks ago, and I actually, yesterday, I had a leaf pop out. So I know (laughs) that like I'm at least getting like one slip. And I mean, I've got probably about 60 days before I even really think about putting in. So that was another thing is I know that sweet potatoes need to go in later. So I Mm -hmm. usually don't plant them until like May to the middle of May. So I have March, April, I have three months to get... um, a harvest out of that stuff out of that bed, which hopefully I should be able to do. But, um, you know, if I don't, that's, I don't know that we'll cross that bridge, but the sweet potatoes, I look at it the same way. Like if I get sweet potato slips, great. And I always, I'm always going to try, but if I have to buy them, I'm definitely going to buy them. I mean, there's mm-hmm. no way, like at this point it's become an essential edible into our garden and a staple. So we'll, we'll grow those every year to some capacity. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think um, a benefit for me when it comes to kind of the dates and and finish dates and all that, some of the things I grow in the spring, some of them, not most, um, are growing like through the summer. Yeah. So it kind of, there's not as much of a concern, like they can take the heat um, and be fine. You know, my beloved collars are an example, my... Um, extension service says I should be planting Brussels sprouts like closer to the end of spring you know that's their recommendation so kind of getting that right doesn't make that much of a difference well I shouldn't of course it makes a difference but there's it's not as kind of high alert as some of the other things I've had a little bit of success growing lettuce at some point throughout the summer just a little bit nothing like what lettuce looks like in the fall or the spring Um, because there are definitely some opportunities for a lot of varieties to bolt once that summer heat hits Um, the kind of other things that I'm growing in the spring again those heading crops cabbage I've been lucky I've planted it in April I've planted it in May I've harvested it all the way into the summer you know like before it actually finishes now to your earlier point though my intention would be to get those in and out like I don't want to harvest cabbage in August if I planted it in April You know, so some of that also is that cabbage sitting in my garden probably longer than it really should. Well, last year, didn't Um, you have some split cabbages? I had one that split one or because you had some big ass heads of cabbage. Like I was legit jealous. I've been growing some crappy cabbage past couple years. I think I ended up because it was like a six pack. I think I did like a half. um, I think maybe I lost one altogether from the beginning and I ended up with two split heads and three that were whole. And I only pulled them because I'm like, oh, crap, it's split, you know. So and that was definitely the first week of August and they went in the last week of April. So someone had to do that quick math, May, June, July. So they were in the ground probably three and a half months as transplanted plants. Um, so I'm certain that if I were to look back, I could have I feel like I was paying attention in June. I'm like, oh, they're not ready. And then I just skipped over July. And I'm like, oh, crap. You know, <laughs> and then August, I'm like, oh, let me get them out. Um, well, and one that thing- says something like think about it. If, if I use it as a guide, I planted them the last week of April. I remember that distinctly. And let's call them July when they would have been ready. That, that doesn't seem right for cabbage, but it absolutely was. They weren't tough. They were tender, yeah. you know, even many weeks after i really should have harvested them well see and that goes past what you know the the typical seed packets say is like 70 Mm -hmm. days Mm -hmm. and i mean that's 70 days from germination so i mean there's no there there should not be any argument amongst people about that even though you and i both know that when we transplant it gets it's different Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. If it's 70 days from seed and you're, you, I mean, you're talking almost a hundred days in the ground mm-hmm. as transplants and that you can go ahead and add 
at minimum 30 days on top of that you're talking 150 days for some cabbage that's crazy when you say it that way yeah but now that being said you did have some big heads of cabbage and you were the reason why i changed my um variety that i've been growing because i was like you know what i want some big ass cabbage like i'm tired of getting this like like i've been growing Which variety this- did i grow last year i've been growing copenhagen cab market mm-hmm. cabbage for three i just for some reason it was that and walt ham broccoli i got just mm-hmm. like a plethora of seeds so i just kind of been working my way through it and i don't mind getting smaller stuff but you know sometimes i want the prize winning vegetable yeah mm-hmm. so with that being said i mean if you think about the time frame they put on the seed packet to the time frame in which you transplanted and harvested and you only had one split, you could probably take a handful of days off of your grow time. Mm-hmm. You're still over on that time. Now, what's different between you and I? I fertilize and you don't. Mm-hmm. Right. So does that have an effect? Do you think? Well, you would think it would have the opposite. So you would think I would have smaller heads of cabbage based on me not fertilizing, wouldn't you? Not necessarily. Hmm. I, I don't I don't think that a, I don't think fertilization has anything to do with the size of the plant necessarily. Well, I, I take that back. I think it may have a little bit to do with it, but I think what it does is it definitely pushes the growth because I know that like in the greenhouse, we had the aphid damage. So mm-hmm. I pushed extra fertilizer in there to get it to outgrow the damage. So, you know, we can go ahead and get some more sprouts growing and help that plant recover a little bit better. So we've done stuff like that for sure in our garden. Um, but I, I don't know if it makes that much difference. I mean, I think variety definitely matters 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think that when it comes down to it, that it does help speed the process along a little bit. And really get in some plants and especially like cabbages and stuff, they are, you know, they're heavy feeders on nitrogen. So that, you know, pushing that nitrogen to them will definitely help. But I don't, I don't know. And that's why I'm pushing mostly just fish fertilizer right now because it's mostly nitrogen. I mean, you have a little bit of the, the P and the K in there, but that nitrogen <laughs> will help. Sorry. What are you laughing at? I feel at? Such, like such a child giggling at the P and the K. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I think it does make a difference. But I wonder <clears throat> if you would have fertilized your garden, if you would have been able to get those cabbages sooner. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I was trying to look back. I didn't do the best job at like, I actually remember looking at this last year. Like, when was I supposed to have harvested those? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to call it April the 25th was when I planted. And then I harvested like... August the like fifth or something. Um, and if I go back and even if I make a great assumption of like even a month earlier, I looked at what's two heads that split. So the final harvest I planted six, I think in, one of them like was, uh, wasn't producing, wasn't growing, wasn't getting the size. So I ended up with five total harvested two of them earlier, which I can't place the timing for it, but it was earlier than August. And then the three that were remaining, again, all pretty big size. One was whole. And the only reason I stopped to harvest that one was because I saw the other two were splitting again. And I was able to work out. I mean, it didn't impact what I wanted to do with them. Um, But I think you're really like, and I know we spent a lot of time here, but it's a great example of in my area. And I say this in, in, intentionally that number of days was okay that's a lot of time to have something in your garden space and to be quite frank it was okay with me because I wasn't sure what I was going to put behind it because I wasn't sure when they were going to be ready yeah and so I just kind of said we'll see and I'll figure it out when the time comes like I'll cross that bridge when I get there um and I think that actually that garden bit ended up barely being yeah I didn't plant much after that August uh pulling it up it's kind of hard to get things in your garden in august anyway yeah. which also kind of le- lends itself to like that's kind of late to be pulling something out of the garden from the spring yeah that's um that's a good point too because that was my next question is like what did you put behind it but because didn't you plant like carrot cabbage carrot cabbage or, yep yeah yeah cab carrots were on the edge of the bed and cabbage was like that next row over um and I ended up like kind of just tossing some things in there in the fall. 
and didn't really get much produced in that bed after that, which is actually kind of sad when we look at it that way. But it, it goes all the way back to start date, finish date. Yep. And it dictated what happened in that bed for the rest of the growing season. So if that's the case, and let's say now this year, you, you don't know what variety you grew, right? You know, I never know what variety I grew. Yeah, so, I mean, that's okay. <laughs> so and that's kind of is my point, though, is like if you're buying transplants, you kind of don't know what you're getting sometimes. And it's going to be hard to replicate it. But like mm-hmm. if you did the same variety this year, you would have a very good idea of like, okay, last year it went 100 days. So this year, maybe mm-hmm. I can make it go 90 days, you know, and you can kind of mm-hmm. start working that out because I know that for my, um, well, basically my cabbages and even my Brussels sprouts, which I am not qualified to talk about in public, to be honest, but I'm going to, <laughs> um, you know, the first leaves take a while to grow, but once it starts heading up, I think it, it happens fairly quickly because the leaves get smaller and, you know, they're, they're smaller and smaller and smaller, you know. No, they start out small, but they get bigger and bigger, but you start forming that head and then you can kind of start. So back to the original point, though, if you had something to put in the ground, you could go ahead and harvest a smaller head. Now, would you as a gardener, this is where we step in and I think we can get in our own ways. Would you rather have five smaller heads or three big heads and two that were just kind of split? And even though they were good, let's just say they weren't good. Which would you rather have? <laughs> Talk about a loaded question. Yeah, it is. I'd rather have the five um, larger heads. I'm going okay. to jump out and say that just from like a really far away picture, I think those cabbage were ready about uh, July 15th. So if I I harvested my garlic um, July 9th, and I'm only able to, to capture that time frame, that no dates like this for like a year next year i won't be able to remember any of this crap so you know uh but i'm gonna say i harvested my garlic july 9th if i would have looked over just a little bit further i could have probably pulled that cabbage at that point yeah that's a big difference like 70 days that that puts you right in a whole different space now the the kind of the rainbow in this and the you know like the um the sunshine, the lemonade out of this is in my area. I'm being very specific by saying that that cabbage held in the garden yeah. for almost another month. Right. You know, so we know the cracking is, you know, kind of the water watering and how I mean, older plants do that, too. But how much water was it getting? How much rain were we getting in that point? Um, was I or watering more going in July to August because I know it's getting hotter and all of that stuff? Um and I don't know what I would have done differently, but let me say this. When I pulled up the garlic, July 9th, I planted that bed out within the next week. You know, so yeah. that whole area of that garden could have been cleared if I would have paid closer attention to the cabbage. And then one of the things that's odd, because I can't see the heads of the cabbage, but I can see what the plant's doing. And I'm pretty sure that that's the reason I'm going back to like July 15th for sure. That picture looks like I should have been pulling those cabbage out. And it was three weeks later before I did. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's crazy. So, I mean, and now that you know that, would you would you do it different or do you think you would probably have done the same thing? Now that I know that I not only would I do that different, I would have pulled those heads out earlier. But I also going into this year, my intention, my plants don't look like it's going to work out that way. But my intention is to plant earlier than call it April 25th is when I planted last year. Right. The prior year, I planted some of these vegetables the first week of April. When's your last frost basically date? basically the last week. April the 17th. Yeah, I mean, dude, I would be planning way before that. Mm-hmm. But, but what is it normally? Like, they recommend up to three weeks before your average last frost date for some of these cold hardy uh, Some of them vegetables. are six weeks. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, cabbage is, th- in our area, other than the peas, are the first ones that we can put in the garden. Yeah. So... Um, and to note, I didn't have any transplants for, that I had started from seed. I had to go out and buy some. But I I think, <laughs> I think I bought those like at the end of March. 
And so I was just BS it around. Like I was trying, I was doing something, yeah. you know, like getting the beds ready and there's a whole bunch of projects I had in front of it. And I looked up and then I had this moment of like, I need to get out here and get this stuff in the, in the ground. Yeah. And fortunately that worked out for me, but it's, what did you say? How many t- mistakes do you make in spring? I kept on making them, right? Yeah. Got out there late, planted them. And then kind of, you know, if you kind of go along with obviously it happened in summer, let those things sit like, the garden gods were good to me to give me what they gave me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, so like for th- this year, for example, I think earlier this week I dropped some cabbage um, in another section and I did it because it's a shadier section. So I knew that it mm-hmm. could, you know, withstand the heat a little bit longer, mm-hmm. but I should have put it in the ground like a month beforehand and I wouldn't be having the slight anxiety that I have. I put it in and I was like, you know what? I'll probably end up having to rip it up. But at least it's in the ground and I'm giving it, you know, the old college try. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what we can do about that. But when you come to determining that finish date, that's I mean, if I could figure that out and I think it's just growing one variety for more than one year, you know, you know how we like to jump around and like, all right, well, this Mm -hmm. year I did, you know, I did romaine lettuce. Now I'm going to do head lettuce. Now I'm going to do freckled lettuce. Now I'm going to do bib lettuce and, you know, whatever you know short leaf lettuce and all that i think it's like if you just did it for a couple years for one variety you would start to kind of learn because especially once you start getting into like hybrid varieties and stuff it can be a drastically different harvest date for each one yeah yeah that's um i think the variety and planting around the same time over a couple of years put you in a better place to predict some of these things so you're obviously starting with recommendations from trusted sources like your extension service when it comes to when you should plant like that could be your starting point then you get out there with a healthy transplant for most of the spring vegetables we've recently just talked about peas obviously would be different you'd be direct selling those so you get that transplant out and then you care for it in the way you normally do harvest it when it's mature Right. You know, so that's your now new baseline. That's your year one baseline. Yeah. You know, so you go to year two, you try to mimic those things that are similar because you toss a different variety in there and who knows, you know, you're, you you're, shift. it's like starting at square one again. Yeah. You shift a planting date by as many weeks as I did. I, ha- I we won't get to it today, but I have some information in my phone around the difference between planting cabbage like vegetables i think it was a red cabbage the first week of april versus the second week or the last week of april that's like a three week difference and how they were different in my garden when was each of them ready you know what i'm saying and well, no, um, no, no. you gotta you gotta help me out here when was each one, which one did better i just told you i that was the whole lead into the it's here somewhere. I couldn't scroll to it to figure oh, it out quick it. enough. Okay, so. okay. <laughs> I'll give you a so pass I on ready that because now I want to know. Everybody yeah, else yeah. is like, what is it, Batavia? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But a, a good uh, co-host would basically fill in some of the gaps so I could scroll through really quickly. <laughs> That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> You're sitting here waiting like we're still waiting. Yeah, I'm on this edge of my seat. because, And I mean, that's the reason why I asked that is because that's the big thing too about like right now in our area i had a guy come by last year and he bought he i was selling tomato seedlings and he's like oh i've had mine in for like two months and this is in like Mm -hmm. early april Mm -hmm. and i was like oh okay you know it's like way too early and he's like you need to start selling them in like february and i'm like there's no way it's not you know it's not good to put them in so bottom line is i found out through the grapevine that the guy never really got great harvest because he planted them too early (laughs) and so that can be another part of it too is like you want to get to that finish date sooner but sometimes the weather just doesn't work out i mean you can insert and this is really bad for like summer crops you know what i mean like the cool can really affect the summer crops so if you've planned out your garden well And you know, and you're doing like an intensive schedule and you put something in the ground early, you could potentially be delaying it farther than you need to have it delayed to start off with, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's the hard part because, um, like I would assume that's probably that the guy's first time doing that. Cause if it wasn't, he would have already known better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so the drum roll is in 2021, 
Um, I have a beautiful red cabbage. I forgot that I took this picture. Gosh, we were cute. Uh, so you that and the red cabbage, cabbage were cute? Yeah, 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 we both were. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Yeah, so we planted it, and this is, it may be off a day or two, but planted around a transplant around April the 5th, and this is, the day of the picture is July the 15th. I'm doing math so, in my so head. So Leonard, do that may, quick math. <laughs> so you're right at 90 days again. Yeah, right at 90 days versus again. I mean, I guess one could argue if I really did the math, we probably are shifting a little bit when it came to ended up harvesting in in August. That's, I mean, it's about the same time. Instead of planting April the 5th, I planted April 25th. Instead of harvesting July 15th, I harvested like around April, August the 5th. That's about the same number of days, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But that's that tells you something different when my tag didn't say 90 days. I'm sure of that. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. What made you harvest that cabbage on that day? Oh, let me look back into my notes from July the 15th of 2021 as to what led me to that. Yeah. Is this is this if you know what I'm about to say, we're going to wrap this episode up because the level of me being impressed is going to be too big for me to continue. So I'm going to almost guarantee you if I have some video footage around that time, I probably should have harvested that cabbage a couple of weeks early. This was me saying, oh, shoot, let me pull this out. Like, you know, I've been meaning to pull this out for weeks now. And here it is, July 15th. Right. You know? Right. Is that what you're thinking? No, so I knew you were going to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> but what was the cue to tell you when you were like, even back then, like the t- couple weeks beforehand, when were you going to act like, what made you say like, I need to go ahead and pull that cabbage? It was probably more like, I don't want it to go bad, whatever bad means. Like I didn't, I, I don't know if I would, it would be nice to wrap this up in, in a bow and say, cause I didn't want it to split, Yeah. but I don't think that that's where I was. I think I knew going in that, you know, however many weeks prior, I'm telling you, I bet there's a video where I'm saying like at the end of June, like I should be harvesting this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, if I, I know what a, a cabbage, a mature cabbage looks like. Yeah. Well, and, and there the, was no more growing that that thing was going to do. That's you know? what I was kind of getting at is like you look at it and you're like it's not growing anymore you mm-hmm. know what i mean and then at some point and I'm, I'm dude i'm guilty about this tell me if you are where you're like but i'm gonna leave it just a little bit see if it can get a little bit bigger just a little bit bigger you know like what is one leaf gonna do you know what i mean what's one more <laughs> layer gonna do let's be real it's it, such a bad habit it yeah. is a terrible i don't know that habit. i do that for not for cabbage but i absolutely do that for stuff like tomatoes yeah. Like, you know, uh, terrible about that. Or zucchini, like squash is a great example of. Oh, like, that's it's, the worst. When you're it's like, it's small. Get, yeah. And you know it's going to be tasty, but you're like, all right, let me just get a little bit more growth. And then it's like the size of a baseball the yeah. next morning. And it's full of seeds. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, yeah. And I mean, I you said this year that you had radishes actually produced in the time frame that the package said, right? No, that was like two years ago. You're having me go back in the Wayback Machine. In the fall, two years ago, so not last year, but the year before, I planted like September 1st and September like 30th. I direct sowed September 1st and September 30th, I ended up harvesting them. I think the seed package said 25 days. Oh, well, I mean, you know. give it five days, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, yeah, it was spot on. I've not been able to replicate that. I point out that it was two years ago because last year that wasn't my story. Yeah, I've, you know, and that's the... I mean, it's funny. I put radishes in the garden, man, and they stay forever without really. I mean, like, but without coming to maturity. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I have them in there for fifty days. You know, twice what it says. Now I will say this: spacing is important when it comes to this too. So for me, like in my greenhouse right now, my carrots. Um, I was when I sowed them. I was like, I'm gonna come back, and I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to come back and I'm going to thin them out and guess what never mm-hmm. happened. So I was thrilled because I've been trying for a couple of years to grow carrots in the greenhouse and I was thrilled to get it. I've gotten some smaller carrots. I'm starting to get a little bit bigger and I've done a lot of thinning since, mm-hmm. but when they're overcrowded, they're not going to get the size. So yeah, that's yeah. a big part of it too, is like you got to give things the right spacings in order to move forward and then to get it to grow to that full potential that it has. Well, but the most important thing that I've observed when it comes to things like radishes and carrots, which are things that we'd plant in the spring, it's the timing. So 
I've consistently failed when I've tried to plant. I mean, I've tried to plant both in the summer. Yeah. Before I knew better, right? Um, and consistently failed. I've tried to plant them like later in the summer, but it's still pretty hot. Consistently failed. And failed means either they didn't produce at all. They produced like like not even a pencil size, you know, carrot or immediately a spicy uh, radish, which I don't, that's not what I want. Right. Um, the timing on crops like that are super important. I think that um, I, when I was scanning through to look for that picture of the cabbage, I came across like my favorite harvest of turnips. And it was sometime in June. I'll have to figure out now when I direct sow them because I want to try to replicate that. And in the years when I didn't follow that kind of, this is the timing that worked. That's uh, turnips were one of the things I planted in July last year. And boy, if I would have watched that closer, maybe they would have been okay, but they weren't the tastiest. Yeah. You see, and it's, it's in the heat of everything. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I mean the timing of it, the start date in your particular climate and then the estimated finish date, which I mean, it's like um, the magic eight ball, man. When is this cabbage going to be ready? Yeah. Well, and you, I mean, you Sometime said the key in the word future. estimated. And mm-hmm. so without your experience and growing said variety of whatever, you're never going to really know that that finish date. And even if you've grown it for years, it can still vary from year to year to an extent. Mm-hmm. I mean, generally speaking, from my experience, varieties that are sowed year after year generally have roughly the same amount of time that they, you know, they come to that finish date. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and I mean, spacing is a big part of it, man. If you put them too close together, you're not going to get what you're looking for. You know, my mom always said, leave some room in the garden for the angels to play, (laughs) you know, just leave a little spaces in between, you know, I had a, um, a gentleman come by the other day and he was telling me that um, he's just get it's been years since he gardened. He's just getting back into it. And I'm, from what I understand, him getting back into it, he'd like jumped head first back into it. Mm-hmm. But he was saying last year, he's like, man, I looked at my garden. I didn't see nothing but dirt. And he's like, <laughs> and I go to my son's garden. And it's just all I see is like green and lush. And he's like, I got to get my spacing right. And I think that's really important, you know, and it's hard to look at it when it's a little seedling and you don't see anything but dirt and a little seedling, but once that all fills in, you're going to be good to go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's an important concept to understand when you're looking for that finish date. Yeah, it definitely impacts it. A couple of years back, um, I planted the spacing was off compared to what I normally do for my collards and cabbage that were planted in the same bed and it produced little to no cabbage, yeah. you know? So obviously spacing with the same plant is a thing, but especially if you're interplanting, you have to be careful of the space. And that's a part, you know, sometimes I'm just so excited about all of the different things with gardening. Like you have to consider that influence kind of what your end result's going to be. And then sometimes I'm just like, Oh my gosh, you know, because how big a plant is going to get that's planted around it. Absolutely matters yeah. right you know it totally you may does. have that timing that finish date etched out but gosh are you really getting as much sun as you should be getting you know are these plants around it sh- shading out something yeah and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. watering them is another important factor because you got to keep them hydrated man mm-hmm, if you think mm-hmm. about it these plants that we're talking about right now for spring they're mostly water all plants are mostly water but you're eating the leaves so you've got to keep them watered and it is okay to let them dry out, but if you're one of those that lets it wilt and then you're like, oh, got to water, yeah. then you're, you're missing the mark and you're slowing that growth down as well. Mm-hmm. So, and then mm-hmm. not to mention you have other stressors, if you had any kind of pest damage or anything like that. So it's like set up for like, yes, this vegetable should be done in 50 days, but by the time you go through your setback from your pest, your setback from your watering, your setback from you know, this, that, and the other, you're now up to 90 days. So it's Mm -hmm. like finding Mm -hmm. that perfect medium to get everything to grow. Yeah. But there's also this bit about like, it doesn't necessarily need to even be perfect either, because in some cases you'll still get some production. Yeah. Which I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's cool, too. You may not get what you desire, but you will get some production. And I think that's part of the gardening, too, where you're just like, look, I got I got small head of cabbage. I'm happy. You know, mm-hmm, look, I got this. Mm-hmm. I got the world's smallest Brussels sprouts this year, and you couldn't tell me nothing. I walked around, <laughs> my chest puffed out for a couple of days. Everybody's like, "Why are you so happy?" I'm like, because I grew a Brussels sprout. What'd you do today? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I was looking at one more date because I've only grown cabbage like four years. I think I know this isn't about cabbage, but it's a really good example. I mean, we could be talking about tomatoes like we always do. Um, And I feel like I should just focus my energy on growing cabbage because when I do, it ends up working out. I think that um, remember I always joke about planting my garden in June and I absolutely have a reference point to. I basically planted my uh, some cabbage transplants in June of 2019 and harvested them August of 2019. So about that's two months. That's so that goes back to the shoot. That's 60 days. Yeah. Now you're talking business. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, nope. I know you're at wondering. I don't know the variety. <laughs> I, I'm sure I didn't know it then. <laughs> but now I'm thinking back, like, I haven't looked back at this kind of stuff, which I said I was going to do, but never got to. But that's actually a pretty, like, is my sweet spot now growing cabbage in June? No, don't do that. No. You know, don't, don't set out to plant them in June. Um, but I absolutely ended up doing that that year. And fortunately, it worked out. Um but I'm pretty sure now if we look at it, I'm pretty sure there's an opportunity somewhere between 60, 70 days for me to plant in the spring and then harvest 60, 70 days later. Maybe that'll be a a challenge for myself this year. All right, everybody. Well, Only you, for cabbage. That's all. I'm not going to focus on anything else. Only for cabbage. If Harvest it on time. If you listen to what Batavia just said, which I hope you did, what I gathered from it was you don't have to plant it in June, but if you plant it in July, then you've already got your... Some your fall garden going, and you're going to be harvesting cabbage right when we're told we should be harvesting it. So there it is. That's exactly what I was saying. Everybody, <laughs> thank you for listening to us. Check out all of our affiliate links below to get yourself some good stuff. Check us out on Patreon and Apple subscriptions, all those good places, and um, figure out that finish time, and can just continue to learn to grow and grow for change. See ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.